I've been giving I've been given warning that it's a little bit crowded today. My uh, my brother just went to the gym and he came back right as I was leaving. So not ideal. I mean, you hate to go into a gym when it's packed. I mean, that just sucks. But right, there's ways you can kind of get around that. Right? Let's say for uh, let's say for example, you're the type of guy who you've got your workout all planned out before you even get to the gym, right? Maybe you've got it written down or it's part of your program. And the first movement you got to start on is, let's say, flat bench. There's multiple things wrong with that, in my opinion, but, well, okay, let's go on a quick tangent. It's, I always do incline. I think you should probably do more incline, but, but whatever, whatever. So if you've got in your mind or in your routine or whatever, like you're locked in to having to start with one particular movement. Uh, I mean, sure, you know, as long as you go hard, your workout's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's not really conducive with, adapt, you know, uh, adapting to your surroundings. Because right? let's say that this gym is packed and there's already a fucking line of, uh, what the hell's going on here? Perfect. Let's say there's already a line of like 10 people for the, uh, for the benches. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there for 30 minutes and wait for one? Not a good move. Not the move of the enlightened lifter. That is for sure. Right? So even if the gym's fucking packed, in my mind, you know, my workout, I've got a basic idea of what I want to do. But I've been doing it for so long that like for arms, let's say all the cables are taken. Maybe I'll start with some, uh, some overhead tricep stuff with the dumbbells or some skull crushers, whatever else, you know, I can react to like, if the machine that I want to use is taken, I'll just use something else, right? I would hate to, uh, little bit of a caveat. Let's say it's my, <laughs> for chest, obviously I love starting off with incline bench. So if it's the first movement and I'm not in a rush, I might wait. I may wait a little bit, but if I'm mid-workout, I'm mid-pump, I do not want to be waiting around for more than three minutes uh, for any reason, right? So least of all having to like wait for a machine or, hey man, hey man how many sets do you have? How many sets do you have left, dude? If they say anything more than one, that just means I'm moving on to a new machine or a new movement. So, basic idea. Try to keep some, uh, try to keep some plasticity to your approach to training, so you can react if a gym is fucking packed to hell. I don't think that's gonna bother me though, because I've just got arms. All it is is gonna be push downs and curls, with a variety of each. Well, uh, you'll you'll check it out. I'll I'll explain it while I'm doing it. But I already slammed the pre. Let's just fucking get in there. Most of the cables were actually taken. But if, if anything, this is actually a blessing in disguise. So typically, you know, first set of fucking this or the other. Now you tell the So but usually what will happen with me for heavy pushdowns is the first set, I mean, the stack just isn't enough weight. So I'll fucking slap like two 45-pound plates onto the side with like an extra pin. But if you've got one of these machines with these two arms... Right? You move them kind of close together, you can fucking attach the same handle to both. So now I've got two of these stacks at my disposal, and this is starting to feel pretty fucking heavy. So I think I'll just sit here for a couple of sets, you know, try to maintain reasonable form. But the main idea with opening like this, obviously I did a warm-up so that my elbows would feel nice and well, obviously fucking warm. But my idea with these sets isn't, like... It's not to do a perfect contraction at the bottom, right? And just do like, you know, fucking perfect reps, whatever. I'm really just trying to take my tricep through a working range of motion with as much tension as possible, right? This would be like the equivalent of my compound lift, right? Like this is my bench press where I'm trying to load up as much weight as I can fucking move. And then later in the lifts when I move on to lighter movements where I can really focus on squeezing, that would be like the equivalent of a fly or a, uh, you know, the pec deck. 
but enough explaining. Let's just fucking sit here for a couple. <clears throat> Let's transition into some uh, some overhead stuff. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Minor technical difficulty. Right. There we go. I already know I'm gonna feel my fucking triceps tomorrow. And not in a bad, crunchy elbow way. In a good, fucking fatigued, thrashed way. So, finisher. I've been, I've been liking these. I've been doing these like the last three arm days. So, you know, cables, I don't know, yay wide apart, lightweight. I mean, this is, the stack goes up to 80 and this is just the 20s, right? So I'll reach across each way. And I'm seriously just trying to squeeze the fuck out of my triceps at the bottom of the movement, right? And then, I mean, I'm just trying to burn out as much as possible, get as much blood in here as, uh, as I can before I start some curls. Oh. 
Let's start some curls. Oh, okay. I don't mind swinging a little bit at the end, but let's move on to uh, some machine curls. Only two sets of dumbbell curls. How's that going to be effective? Well, it's not about the fucking sets, or it's not about the specific exercises, right? No matter what fucking kind of curl I'm doing, I'm thrashing the fuck out of my biceps. Well, ideally, if it's a, a curl that I like. So, I know I've got 11 total sets for buys. You know, two of them were those dumbbell curls, but I felt like I wanted to move on to the seated machine. But if those curls felt extra good today for whatever reason, like some days, you know, some movements are just gonna be fucking like your bread and butter for just kind of <laughs> random reasons beyond your control. Like, I wouldn't mind doing an entire workout just sitting there off the dumbbell rack, alternating curls, if it felt really good. And I thought I was going to get a thrashed... I think I've, been I've been saying thrashed a little too much. If I thought I was going to get a sick-ass pump. But, you know, right now, in my mind, I think, all right, some seated machine curls is going to feel good. So let's uh, throw the stack around for a couple. <laughs> For the most part, the more amped up you can get before a set, the better. Now, I'm not saying it's absolutely necessary, but I know I usually have a good ass set when I've got can't be touched playing, and the first five seconds before I even grab the handles, I'm going. So, do with that what you will. Two more here. Let's do some easy bar curls. Oh, getting back into, I mean, this is a pretty basic set. You know, I'm just gonna try to focus on, for at least the first couple of reps when I'm strong, like taking a moment and really squeezing at the top. But you know, after I do five reps of that, really I'm just gonna be trying to fucking burn out as much as possible. Now, the straps are back on, why? Uh, your forearms aren't really gonna, gonna little bit, your forearms aren't really gonna play 
They're not going to play a big role when you're doing like barbell or easy bar curls. Uh, this bar is just a little bit slick. Like the knurling is kind of smooth. So this will just help me get a better grip on it. more sets I'm not sure what I want to do yet I can't speak for the next two sets yet I'm not sure what I want to do I'm uh, I'm completely open to ideas from the universe to cosmically enter my brain and tell me what kind of curl to do next but I know that right now a set of single arm preacher curls with the 50s is gonna feel fucking sick so let's throw it around Okay, let's get a little bit into the technique. I can use a little bit more rest. Um, when you're doing these, right, similarly to a, uh, to a bench press, right, let's, let's think about a, a rep when you're doing bench, right? You get to the top, you're, this is the resting position, right? When you're at the top of the rep, your arms are straightened, right? This is where you rest. You know, when you get to the last couple sets of your, last couple reps of your set, you hold up here, you take a breath. This kind of set right here with the preachers is more so one of constant work. Because though you may think that up here is the time for you to rest, like that this is the resting position, and then you go down and then you come back up. What I'm trying to focus on is even though the weight is getting lighter as you get closer to the top, because it's closer to being supported just by a forearm. I don't know if you know about trigonometry, but it's hardest down here and easiest up here. I'm not taking the tension off when I get to the top. I'm almost trying to squeeze even fucking harder. Which, I mean, in terms of the scientific reasoning, you know, I'm not the guy to ask. All I can tell you is you're going to get a fucking way freakier pump. And as long as you go hard, you're probably going to see some gains. I've been enlightened. I'm gonna do another set of seated curls in the machine I did earlier, and then a set of alternating dumbbell curls, and I'll be done. Actually, I think one more here, and then I'm fucking done. Okay. 
you know what time it is. I don't even have to say it. Uh, there we go. Now that's now we're starting to get a little bit of some freaky, slightly lowered exposure cinematography going. So, you know, I'm fucking drenched. That was just an arm day. I, uh, I kind of picked up the pace for buys. Like, I could tell I was starting to take a little bit extra time today in between sets for no real reason. I mean, yeah, rest time was probably at about a minute, minute and a half in between. Enough where I can, you know, catch my breath, feel like I'm ready to do another one, but not so much that I have to, like, well, you don't, you don't need to rest so long where you don't even feel like you're fucking pumped anymore, right? Like I was standing on the way here, I would not want to fucking wait more than three minutes to do a set, you know? And I don't really tend to jump the gun and hit my sets too early to the point where I'm not recovered enough in the last one. So if you catch yourself taking like 30 second rest periods and then you feel like you're ready for another set, I think you may want to get a little stopwatch and, stopwatch and watch yourself. But for the most part, you know, just wait till you catch your breath, feel strong again, and then hit the fucking weight one more time. So let's see what kind of pump we're working with. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not a fucking big NFT fan, but who knows? Could I become a could I become a billionaire by like <laughs> making different NFTs from the sweat marks on the shirts? If one of you guys does that, just give me some royalties. But let's fucking just see this pump. Oof. Hello. Oh, what's going on? A little bit of a uh, anecdote from the karate teacher, who is apparently also a bodybuilder. Very interesting. But uh, let's get back in the zone of the pump. Just by feeling, like I can tell, uh, buys are fucking getting tense just as soon as I uh, flex them. <sighs> but let's let's run through some mandatories. <sighs> I guess this isn't really a mandatory, but. I love a fucking crucifix. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Really fucking squeezing the fuck out of him. Let's get a lat spread going and then we can basically be done. Mm. Oof. I tell you what, I need to, uh, that's what I need. I need to bring the tape measure in because we're getting close to the end. We got to find out the, uh, the final pumped measurements. It's going to be approaching. Well, I know I'm in the 19s. Like I'm certainly, because I know I'm 19 and, uh, oh, that looks fucking crazy on the camera. That looks, uh, oh, my mind's getting all boggled. I know they're 19 and at least a quarter cold, so that's like wake up in the morning, no pump, no nothing. I don't think I've ever broken 20 even with a pump, but I'm getting close. 20 inches pumped is big. 20 inches cold is huge. So that is a pretty decent measurement that you might want to keep track of if you're, uh, if you're just starting out, if you're still kind of early in your lifting career. You know, maybe just get a tape measure, wrap it around your fucking, uh, your fucking arms, write it down in your fucking notes, August 10th, what day is today, who gives a fuck, August 10th, 2023, 16, and then, you know, you keep fucking eating your protein shakes, you keep working hard, next year, 17, I don't know the standard rate of growth for your arms, but... Oh, that, I was just thinking this. I got to make a fucking post, a little uh, YouTube poll. How big are your arms? We can do a little, uh, 
a little bit of user interaction, viewer interaction, <laughs> look over the data. But, you know, at the end of the day, who gives a fuck about numbers, right? All we're trying to do is make some long-term progress. So don't get too freaked out about, you know, reaching a certain whatever or a certain weight or body fat. I mean, just try to fucking make some long-term changes. You'll be pretty satisfied with that. Like if in my mind, my goal for my arms was, okay, I want them to get to 19 inches. That would be awesome. Then I'm just setting myself up for dissatisfaction. Because once I get there, I'm going to have to change my goal and say, okay, now I want 20. And every time I get there, I won't even be satisfied. Right? So what really kind of satisfies me in terms of my training isn't necessarily hitting any specific milestone, be it weight, strength, size, whatever. It's more so just, you know, making progress over time. Right? The guy who likes walking is going to walk further than the guy who likes the destination. You understand? And that's, um, it's easy to say. You know, it's easy to say this motivational shit or whatever. It's harder to put it into practice. But, you know, if you go to the gym on a consistent basis for long enough, it's just going to become normal life. It's not even going to be a challenge for you to go in. And uh, you should start to see some results coming in. Right, your workouts will pay dividends. Good way to think about it, Warren Buffett style. But let's get the fuck out of here. So there were some freaky, <laughs> some freaky stills to be taken out of that pose down. God, I love a fucking arm pump, dude. It's uh, I love it all. But an arm pump has a, uh, it's got a special place in my heart, as I'm sure it does for you guys as well. So let's, uh, we just got an email. It's nothing. Uh, what was I about to say? So yeah, let's, let's replenish some, some carbs, some intramuscular glycogen with this cluster dextrin shake. And then we can be on my way. This guy's, this guy's backing out in front of me. I gotta wait a second for him. So, ah, fuck, I was thinking about something to say and now I forget it. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's let it simmer. On the, it's on the tip of my tongue. On the freaking tip of my tongue. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And it'll come to me. So let's uh, let's get into a little bit of a topic that may be startling to you. What is the benefit of doing cardio year round, right? Even on a bulk, not just in a dieting phase. Well, it's just fucking good for you, dude. You're not gonna get so winded during your workouts. You're gonna have better endurance. You're going to have better metabolism, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to, uh, you know, just eat all sorts of, you know, what's, uh, what would conventionally be referred to as just junk, you know, high glycemic, you know, carbs that are high on the glycemic index, but rather than just store it as, you know, instant fat. Right? The higher your metabolism is, you know, the higher your daily caloric expenditure is, right? in more basic terms, the more active you are, the easier it's going to be for you to you know, just burn through these, few, these, uh, these foods as fuel rather than instantly you know, store it as fat. So basic idea. I mean, it sounds like a fucking... <laughs> it sounds like the benefits you would get from like a fake test booster from GNC, right? Like... Instead of, like, insert cardio instead of test booster 500. Oh, better metabolism, more energy, less, lean, less fat body, uh, less body fat percentage, higher endurance. I don't know if I said that already, but, yeah, it's a fucking godsend, dude. And then, I don't know, man. If you're, if, it's, 
uh, I'm not a salesman in that sense, you know. I'm not, it's not like I get anything from making you do your cardio, right? I don't have a quota that I'm trying to hit for how many of you I can convert to starting doing your cardio, but cannot be understated, right? And then you just kind of fucking feel like a badass in the beginning of your day, right? You can actually, I could have a day where I don't do jack shit apart from the workouts and the cardio, but, you know, you just kind of feel cooler when you wake up and instead of just kind of lulling around, you know, you either get up, go to the gym, sit down on the bike or whatever, or ideally you're going to have a cardio machine at the house. That's the real way to do it. I've got a seated bike at my apartment at school. I left it over there in storage overnight or over the summer. I should have brought it home with me because it, it kind of does get... I will admit, it's a little bit of a hassle to drive to the gym every morning, or, uh, or in the morning, uh, just because then you got an extra commute, but you know, a little seated bike in the kitchen, that's, that's the best case scenario. That is the best case scenario. So getting back, uh, so about a... Uh, I, uh, wow, dude, I'm really drawing a blank right here, guys. <laughs> Whoops. Maybe I should have written up some, some cue cards. No, so, in terms of the intensity of my sets, I think I talked about this yesterday, but whatever, I'll go over it again. Uh, I just, it just doesn't really make sense to me to want to leave any reps in the tank, right? I read one comment that said it was a guy, uh, it was a guy who was doing RPE-based training for a few months, and, you know, if you're a body, uh, no, 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 if you're a power lifter and that's your shit, you know, you're doing your, uh, I don't even know what the words are, mezzo something, I don't know, you're doing a strength building program, then sure, I could, you know, potentially see the benefits of doing, you know, RPE, sets of RPE 6 or whatever. You know, I'm not really, I'm not even a little bit educated on, you know, how all that shit works. But sure, maybe if that's your shit, then, you know, do some sets where you're, uh, you're leaving shit in the tank. You know, you're doing your back off sets. Cl clearly, this shit was written by dudes who are squatting, you know, eight, nine hundred pounds, whatever. So they know a little something about getting stronger. But, I mean, in a bodybuilding context, you know, muscle building, it's... The harder your sets can be, the better. Right? And I don't mean, like, make them artificially harder by doing, uh, what's the word? Like, funky kind of drop sets or whatever. Like, literally, you can just do only, I could just stop doing any kind of drop sets or anything funky and only do straight sets where the premise of it is going to be picking up a weight, doing as many reps as possible, maybe some partials at the end then put it down, and as long as you can fucking go hard, you're going to get some fucking stimulus. Now, I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. Right? If I actually thought that, then that would be all that I ever do. So I do throw some drop sets and some supersets in every now and again, just to add some variability to my training. Because uh, let's think about the different types of training for muscle building is like a dartboard or like a target. Right. There's all sorts of little areas, right? Like up here in the corner, maybe you can imagine Mike Menser train, you know, two hours a week, two sets per body part per day, you know, and maybe that shit works. And then, you know, down here, you've got kind of what I do over with the, uh, you know, 11 sets per body part and then repeating, uh, doing a loop where you hit every body part every eight days, right? That's kind of how I've been doing it. And then over here, you've got the fucking way, I, way over here, we've got the train your full body every day kind of guys. I'm not so sure I would want to, uh... actually, no, no, instead of, a, instead of a dartboard, let's think of that as a roulette table, right? The full body every day, I probably wouldn't put too many chips on that one. The Mike Menser, one set of, per body part per week. Maybe I'll give them a chip. Maybe I'll put a little bit in there. But for the most part, 
I think in a basic overarching uh, rule set, you're probably going to make some solid gains. If you, obviously all your sets are hard and you eat your protein, whatever. If your workout routine consists of you know, hitting every muscle group twice a week, ish, a little bit of leeway in there, doing about eight to ten sets per body part per lift, right? So that would mean 16 to 20 sets of biceps per week, 10 to 16 sets of chest per week. And then in terms of your rep schemes, you know, eight to 10-ish reps in the beginning of your workout when you're trying to really move around as much weight as possible. And maybe more so like 20 to 25, or maybe 15 to 25 towards the end, just when you're seriously trying to burn out and uh, finish off the pump. So assuming that you go hard, you feel fatigued, and at the end of every one of your lifts, you're pumped. You know, if, if whatever your workout routine is doesn't really exactly line up with those guidelines I just said, well, then who gives a fuck? Right? At the end of the day, that's what you want. You want to get fatigued, get pumped, go home and refuel and rest. So really the kind of point I was trying to say with that fucking roulette table or dartboard analogy was... There is no one specific way to do this shit that is just, you know, scientifically proven, argumentatively, that is just the best method, right? It's kind of a fucking, you know, throw the kitchen sink at it, see what works, uh, or however that saying goes. But that's your responsibility as a lifter, if you want to make some fucking gains, is, you know, you're not the net, you're not the same genetic build and you haven't done the exact same shit as fucking you know Chris Bumstead sitting right next to you on your on your left or uh, who's another I don't know Joe Schmo sitting next to you on your right you know you're a different fucking build than them so sure whatever he's doing may work for him but you've got to figure out what works for you and there's really nothing else to it so in that sense I mean you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error, right? Try some new shit. Or if you're kind of a beginner and you don't really know what you're doing yet, just try something. Try to stick to some kind of routine. Uh, again, I always reference uh, back when I was starting out and uh, <laughs> when I would write my workout splits in Google Docs and shit, that was when I was really watching a ton of Jeff Nippard. He has uh, his like how-to lifts and like early on starter videos or, you know, videos targeted towards new lifters, those are super concise. You know, I'm not really a huge science-based guy, but he does cover a lot of good points, which, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not really going to lay out in such a easily digestible manner as he does. So, other than that, cardio in the morning, I'm probably going to go get some Kroger sushi, and then... And that's it. So I'll fucking see you next time.